the bottom of this is about a great, great mistake. Yeah, it looked just like the dude that had me busted. Uh, to whom are you referring, sir? Right there, the dude right over there. That's my car, Coleman. Coleman, that's my car. Trading Places is a 1983 comedy film directed by John Landis that would become one of the most iconic comedy movies of the 1980s. Dan Aykroyd stars as Louis Winthorpe III, a wealthy commodities broker in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He works for brothers Randolph and Mortimer Duke, played by Ralph Bellamy and Donna Michi, who hold opposing views on the issue of nature versus nurture in society. I just cannot believe how stupid these scientists are, the eternal question. There's no question. The answer is obvious. I don't care about heredity versus environment. In fact, I'm sick and tired of hearing it. Winthorpe lives in a large townhouse with a butler named Coleman, played by Denholm Elliott, and is engaged to the Duke's grandniece Penelope Witherspoon, played by Kristen Holby. After the two brothers witness an encounter between Winthorpe and a poor street hustler named Billy Ray Valentine, played by Eddie Murphy, the Dukes decide to start a wager. Given the right surroundings and encouragement, I'll bet that that man could run our company as well as your young Winthorpe. Are we talking about a wager, Randolph? I suppose you think Winthorpe, say if he would lose his job, would... Resort to holding up people on the streets? No, I don't think just losing his job would be enough for Winthorpe. I think we'd have to heap a little more misfortune on those narrow shoulders. If he lost his job and his home and his fiancée and his friends, if he were somehow disgraced and arrested with the police and thrown in jail even, yes, I'm sure he'd take the crime like a fish to water. They frame Winthorpe as a thief with the help of a criminal on their payroll named Clarence Beeks, played by Paul Gleason, and then plant drugs on him. One cellophane bag. That's not mine. I've never seen that before in my life. That's PCP. Phenocyclidine. Angel dust. You ever seen what this stuff does to kids? Lewis is fired from Duke and Duke. His bank accounts are frozen, he is denied entry into his home, and Penelope leaves him. You've been fired from Duke and Duke. They're preparing charges against you for embezzlement. Embezzlement? I've never stolen anything in my life. Look at the man I loved, whose children I wanted to have in breastfeed be a heroin dealer. He is befriended by a prostitute named Ophelia, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, who takes him in to help him get his life back on track in exchange for a financial payment. I'm talking about a business proposition, Louis. I help you get yourself back on your feet and you pay me, in cash, five figures. That's the deal, and it's not subject to negotiation. Understood? In the meantime, the Dukes bail Billy Ray out of jail and set him up in Winthorpe's home, much to the discomfort of Coleman, who is disgusted by the Duke brothers' wager. Jacuzzi, sir. You see, man, I knew y'all was faggots, man. You ain't jacuzzi nobody. It's a whirlpool bath, sir. I think you'll enjoy it. Hey, hey, bubbles, man. Say, man, when I was growing up, we want jacuzzi, we had to fart in the tub. The Dukes install Valentine in Winthorpe's old job, which he soon finds himself pretty well versed in. Tell me just why you think the price of pork bellies is going down, William. Okay, pork belly prices have been dropping all morning, which means everybody's sitting in their office and they're waiting for them to hit rock bottom so they can buy cheap and go long. So the people that own the pork belly contracts are going batshit. So they're thinking, hey, we're losing all our damn money and Christmas is around the corner and I ain't gonna have no money to buy my son the G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip. Okay, and my wife ain't gonna want to. My wife ain't gonna make love to me because I ain't got no money, right? So they're sitting there and they panicking. They screaming, "Sell, sell!" Because they don't want to lose all their money, right? They out there panicking right now. I can feel it. They out there. They're panicking. Look at it. He's right, Mortimer. My God, look at it. During the firm's Christmas Eve party, Billy Ray overhears the Dukes discussing the bet 
and tracks down a drunken, despondent Winthorpe. Hey, Winthorpe! Winthorpe! <laughs> After learning that the Dukes plan on cornering the frozen orange juice market by using a top-secret crop report they purchased from Beaks, Winthorpe and Valentine band together to take down the Dukes once and for all. My God, the Dukes are going to corner the entire frozen orange juice market. Unless somebody stops them. Or beats them to it. Eggnog. This film was directed by John Landis, best known for the 1978 film Animal House and the 1980 classic The Blues Brothers. The original title of the movie was Black and White, but John Landis hated it, and he offered $100 to anyone who came up with a better title, which became Trading Places. Co-writer Timothy Harris said that Hollywood was reluctant to make comedies that made fun of greed and social conventions. He said Trading Places is sort of a throwback film that owed more to the movies of the 1940s and 1950s than it did to anything that was going on in Hollywood at the time it was made. This film was originally intended to star the comedy acting team of Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor. After Richard Pryor dropped out of the project early on, Gene Wilder pulled out soon after. The studio was ambivalent about casting Jamie Lee Curtis because at that time in 1982, she was known as being a scream queen in horror films. Between 1978 and 1981, Jamie Lee Curtis had starred in Halloween, The Fog, Prom Night, Terror Train, and Halloween 2. Trading Places was Jamie Lee Curtis's first big mainstream role. She has two relatively famous topless scenes in this movie, and she stated that she did not feel exploited in Hollywood until she began starring in mainstream films like this one. She never had been asked to appear naked in any of the horror movies she starred in, but once she went mainstream, she was asked to take her top off a lot. In 1990, Jamie Lee Curtis told the Chicago Tribune she didn't regret appearing topless in this film, saying that her breasts are beautiful and they've gotten a lot of attention for what is relatively short screen time. And if my breasts have become the topic of dinner conversations at frat houses, God bless them. Ray Milland was the first choice to play the role of Mortimer Duke. The role of Clarence Beeks was originally offered to G. Gordon Liddy. Sir John Gielgud and Ronnie Barker were offered the role of Coleman the butler. Dan Aykroyd and Jamie Lee Curtis would go on to appear together in My Girl, My Girl 2, and Christmas with the Cranks. Jamie Lee Curtis once stated that Dan Aykroyd was the best kisser she ever met in her life. This was Ralph Bellamy's 99th film and Don Amici's 49th film. This was Eddie Murphy's second film, and he joked, Between the three of us, we've made 150 movies. In 2001, Eddie Murphy stated that making Trading Places was the most fun he had ever had on set, and that every film afterward felt more like work. Don Amici's strong religious convictions made him uncomfortable with swearing. This was a problem at the end of the movie where he had to shout, Fuck him! to a group of Wall Street executives. When he did act out the scene, it had to be done in a single take because Don Amici refused to do a second one. Mortimer, your brother's not well. We'd better call an ambulance. Fuck him! The number given to Winthorpe in his mugshot is 747-45058. The same number given to John Belushi's character Jake in John Landis's 1980 film The Blues Brothers. Dan Aykroyd did this as a tribute to John Belushi, who had died the previous year. Frank Oz has a cameo as a police officer who is checking in Winthorpe's property when he gets arrested, similar to the role he played in the Blues Brothers. The music playing in the background of the fine dining restaurant is the exact same music playing when Jake and Elle would dine in a fancy restaurant in the Blues Brothers. I'm considering going long on April wheat. What do you think, Valentine? When Valentine is in the restaurant and Winthorpe is standing outside in the rain, Valentine has asked his opinion about wheat. At that moment, the entire room stops speaking and leans in to hear his advice. This was a reference to a series of early 1980s commercials for the brokerage firm E.F. Hutton. When E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. 
The rich girlfriend seated at the table is Lucianne Buchanan, who was Miss California 1974. The punchline of Bunny's story, And she stepped on the ball. <laughs> is a reference to the 1958 film Anti-Mame, in which Gloria Upson tells a joke with the same punchline. And we had this really terrific volley, and I stepped back to get this really terrific shot. And I stepped on the ping pong ball. <laughs> oh, I just squashed it to bits. When Winthorpe and Valentine arrive at the World Trade Center, Winthorpe tells him, in this building, it's either kill or be killed. This line was removed from some television broadcasts after 2001 out of respect for the victims of the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks. In 2010, as a part of the Wall Street Transparency and Accountability Act, which was to regulate financial markets, a rule was included which barred anyone from using secret inside information to corner markets. Since the movie inspired this rule, it has since become known as the Eddie Murphy Rule. Released into theaters in June 1983, Trading Places grossed a worldwide total of $120.6 million on a budget of just $15 million. This made Trading Places an enormous box office success, and while it was never the number one movie at the box office, it spent 17 weeks straight in the top 10 movies in theaters and would wind up becoming the fourth highest grossing film of 1983 in the United States. President Ronald Reagan screened Trading Places at Camp David on June 17, 1983. This was a massive hit in theaters, on video, and when shown on television broadcast throughout the 1980s and into the 1990s. By the 21st century, Trading Places began to be listed as a Christmas and New Year's holiday classic. Merry New Year! Happy New Year. In this country, we say Happy New Year. <laughs> Thank you for correcting my English with stinks. I first saw this film back in the 1990s, and every year it becomes more and more of a holiday treat for me around Christmas and New Year's. I believe that its enduring popularity with both older and younger generations will continue to solidify its status as a 1980s holiday classic. Trading Places is very reminiscent of films from the 1930s and 1940s, and I believe that that quality could add to the vintage, timeless feel of the movie. I actually believe this is pretty close to what I'd call a perfect movie, and I consider it to be among my all-time personal favorite films. Looking good, Billy Ray! Feeling good, Louis! I highly recommend the 1983 comedy classic, Trading Places. <laughs>